right, welcome back. Um, this lesson is going to be about tracking your food. And um, once again, I'm Tiffany Calvert, the County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences. And I'm Angie Hudnell, Registered Nurse, Health Improvement Program Specialist at Purdue Farms. Okay, so um, why should you track your food? You really don't realize exactly what you're eating or what you're lacking in your diet until you start tracking it. Um, did you see my picture on Facebook this morning, Angie, of my fabulous breakfast? That was a great breakfast. And you know why? It was because I set my mind to tracking my food, and I thought it has to be good. And I, I wanted to kickstart my morning um, with lots of energy and go ahead and have several servings of fruits and vegetables. So if you didn't see that, I actually, for breakfast this morning, had a serving of yogurt, and I flavored it. Um, it was plain yogurt. I flavored it with natural maple syrup and granola. And then on the plate, I had a whole avocado, about a medium-sized tomato, and then a grapefruit. So right there, I'm already yeah. three servings into fruits and veggies for the day. Yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to show you the My Tracker book. This is a resource that we have at the Extension Office to easily track both your food and your fitness. And I know um, it's easier for me when it's all in one location, but mm -hmm. I can easily see it week by week, my progress, how I'm improving each week. Um, you know, don't set your goals too high at first. If you're just making small changes, um, I will highly encourage you to stick with those small changes. Um, but this is just your food tracking on one side, your activity tracking on the, on the second page, and it's according to the my plate. So you're really trying to see, okay, how many servings of fruits and vegetables did I really get in that meal? Yeah. And you would be surprised how many meals we can have when they're zero, okay? Uh, yeah. Um, whether you're at the ballpark right. or... Um, pepperoni pizza for supper with yeah. sweet tea. Yeah. Well, how, no, nothing yeah. in there. No, nope. yeah. zero. Okay. So when you start tracking your food, you really realize where you need to step it up a notch and which meals mm -hmm. um, you're lacking. And most of the time, it's going to be breakfast. Okay. Um, and think of fruits and vegetables for breakfast. I'm not sure why, but, um, you know, cereal, cinnamon rolls, and donuts always are at the top of the list when it right. comes to people um, thinking of breakfast items. So I want you to encourage you to think about fruits and vegetables. And when it comes down to it, as far as um, becoming healthier, doing better, it's all about fruits and vegetables, okay? That's right. Um, and so Angie's gonna talk about portion control. So you think uh, portion control, well, how can I, you know, if I'm out doing something and I don't have like the cups and everything to kind of measure it out, how can I do that easily? So you can see um, right here, there's uh, the palm of your hand is about three ounces. So like three ounces of meat. Right there. So uh -huh. hopefully you have your hands with you. Yeah, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> and then a tablespoon is your thumb. Yep. And a teaspoon is like just this part of your thumb. The end. So like you think like a pat of butter is just like a teaspoon. And then a cup, of course, is your entire fist. So you want a cup of fruit or a cup of vegetables. Mm -hmm. And then one serving of fruit would be like your handful. And then a fourth a cup would be just holding it up like that, like a fourth cup of nuts. Mm -hmm. And so two tablespoons could also be like a ping pong ball. You know, they're really small. An ounce of cheese is like four dice. Um, three ounces of meat would be the palm of your hand, like the deck of cards. Um, a fourth a cup uh, could be the golf ball. A half cup is a tennis ball. One cup is a baseball. A medium baked potato is a computer mouse. One medium apple could be a tennis ball. And then a medium waffle would be a CD. A CD, okay. Mm -hmm. And so I know a lot of times when we're tracking our food, it's really important to write down an approximate amount of how much you had. Yeah. You just can't say, I had pepperoni pizza for dinner because, well, did you eat the whole medium yourself? <laughs> or did you have two slices? And yeah. what were the size of the slices? Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you were at Holiday World and you ordered pepperoni pizza, it's probably going to be a slice bigger than your head. Right. 
That's so, a couple slices. In same there. thing with muffins. You know, muffins really mm -hmm. range in size from teeny tiny to, you know, birthday cake size. Or servings. <laughs> So serving size is really important when you're tracking your food. Um, when I've learned kind of in uh, preparing my meals for myself for lunch and for my family for their lunches is containers help a lot mm. um, with portion control because, you know, especially with this divided container, you can only fit so much in there. That's nice. Same thing when I'm using my jars at home because I really prefer glass. I know whether or not I had a pint of pasta salad or I had a pint of salad you know a spinach salad and so um, think about the amount your portions and also just as important as um, the amount is knowing exactly what you're eating um, and that's when it comes into play and how important it is to know exactly how to read a nutrition label and so I just wanted to highlight some parts on the nutrition label that's really important. The very first thing you need to look at is at the very top. What they are considering to be a serving size. In this case, it's one cup and the serving per container is one. So that one cup of whatever this is, this is what's containing in that one cup. Mm -hmm. A lot of times where people mess up, especially on like a 20 ounce bottle of Coke, uh -huh. what it'll say a serving size, but then it says servings per container too. So when they're yeah. glancing at the sugars and they're like, oh, that's not too bad. Well, if they drank the whole 20 ounce bottle of Coke. You gotta multiply it by two. Gotta multiply it by two. Wow. So this is where you start. You wanna know exactly, do you plan on eating the whole bag of potato chips? Hopefully not, but in several <laughs> cases, if you do, more than likely you're going to have to multiply it by like 12 or 15, well, however you know, many servings. Those super sized bags are larger than, and they, they have like three servings in them. Yeah. And a lot of them, you know, I could sit and eat that whole thing. Yeah. So yeah. it is kind of scary. Yeah. Um, which brings up a very good point with potato chips. Um, mindful eating, you know, eating in front of the television, not a good idea. Um, have you ever opened up a bag, whether it's popcorn, chips, or whatever you're snacking on, and then you just realize, I just sat there and ate the entire container. Right. So, don't walk off from the kitchen with that open bag of chips and plan on sitting down in front of the TV. You know, put it in a container, a jar, or some sort, measure it out in your Get hand. Your serving size. <laughs> exactly. Your appropriate serving size. And then, watch TV. Um, and so... Below that, you're going to start off with things that you should limit, okay? So this total fat right here, my marker's not very good. The total fat is something that you need to limit. Saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, sodium, and sugars. Mm -hmm. All of these things that you need to limit. And if you'll notice on the nutrition label off to the side, it gives percentages on some of these. So let's let's take saturated fat, for example. Of course, this is a 0%, so this mm -hmm. seems to be a healthy item. Um, I would consider 5% a low percent. Anything above 20 is high. 20 and above is considered too high. Wait so high. if the saturated fat is 20%, stay away from it. Okay, way too high. Um, same thing with sodium, 5% is generally pretty low, mm -hmm. um, and so that seems to be okay. Now the trans fat, you always want that to be zero. You don't want to take a chance on that. The trans fat, remember, that's the ones that set up in our arteries and that one kind of, that one creates heart attacks. Yes. Um, so we don't want any trans fat at all. And those will be in liquor chips, popcorn, things like that. Really watch those products. So there also are good things on the nutrition label that you need to be making sure that you get enough of. So mm -hmm. where I said 20% is considered high, on these things, 20% or above is considered excellent. So mm -hmm. um, the vitamins listed at the bottom, this vitamin A, calcium, iron, vitamin D, vitamin C, um, Look at that calcium, 30%. Wow. Vitamin D, 25%. Mm -hmm. That 25% means in one cup 
which is a serving of this item, you're getting 25% of your daily value of vitamin D just in that one cup. Yeah. So that's a pretty good thing. And then you're also, your dietary fiber is a good thing. Uh, so you yeah. want to make sure that you're getting your fiber in for the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, Angie, you know me. I, I look at this, mm -hmm. but then what else, what else do I look at? Well, we also look at the sugar and the protein. The but... sugars I stay away from completely, but I also like to look at the ingredients. Oh, um, yes. And when I'm in the elementary schools and teaching nutrition lessons, I'm constantly having the kids because it's nothing for them to be sitting there with a bag of chips or a Coke. or So I have them read out loud to me the ingredients in what you're eating mm -hmm. um, or a Lunchable or, you know, something mm -hmm. of that nature. And it surprises them. They can't pronounce those words. Yeah. And so even I, today, when I look at a nutrition label and I run across a, a, a word that I'm unfamiliar with, I look it up. But kind of my philosophy is if I can't pronounce it, I probably shouldn't eat it. Yeah, it's not for a nature, <laughs> is it? No, no, it's probably not real food. It's probably uh, packed full of preservatives and just something that we don't want to put in our bodies. And so... Uh, we are here for um, to be able to answer your questions when it comes to tracking your food, but the best advice that I can give you is you cannot be too detailed. We want to know exactly um, what we're, you know, some people forget condiments. Like if you are eating french fries, mm -hmm. you got to include the ketchup. A lot of sugar and ketchup, people don't realize that. Yes, a lot of sugar and ketchup. Um, same thing with your hamburger. Was it a dressed hamburger? What you know? Did you have the mayo, the ketchup, and the mustard on it? Or did you have um, lettuce and tomato and onion? Right. Yeah. And so it's very important that you detail it out as much as possible. And the number one advice that I can give you is just concentrate on fruits and vegetables. Okay. So you have any additional advice? Well, just like you said, fruits and vegetables, they'll save lives. I tell all my diabetics, if you can eat just a lot of vegetables, I can probably reverse this diabetes. Yeah, fruits and veggies. So mm -hmm. we hope you uh, uh, learned something from this, and we'll be here to answer all your questions. Thanks.